Hi guys, I'm Elena Corchero here again and today I am visiting a company. It is Opto. I'm at the Opto Studios to show you the Opto Air. Richard and he's gonna tell us everything about it from where the idea came from from how they developed their Kickstarter campaign to then how is the product being manufactured what any of the challenges the company is going through because the goal of Opto Air is to become the VR headset for everyone let's check it out so this is the Opto Air it's made of a very lightweight foam which make it very comfortable and, and, and more like a wearable it also has built-in sound into the product itself. Put it straight on and you're ready to go. Perfect. It also uses your smartphone with a screen size from 4 to 5.7 inches. So you remove the front cover, choose which experience you'd like to watch. I'm going to watch a movie. Place your phone inside here, connecting up the audio, moving these adjusters for the size of your phone, and then you just pop it on and that's it. You're ready to go. I'm really trying to make it that anyone can use this product and make it affordable and, and, and fun. We're a bit more colourful, a bit more playful maybe than some of the competition. Tom and I met because of another company I'd started and we were working on something very different and decided to uh, uh, continue to develop products together. And one of the challenging things for us is that you know, you're trying to fund it yourself and you're trying to find the time to work on it. Angel Investors, which allowed us to then, uh, you know, quit our day job and uh, devote proper time to developing Opto. The risks there is making a decision to do that when you don't know whether there'll be anything to come back to. For the Kickstarter, for example, I'm sure that that was like rather stressful. Really for us, the whole point of doing the Kickstarter wasn't for the money, it was just to validate whether people wanted to buy this product. You know, 18 hours, 19 hours in front of the computer. So the first thing I did is I sent my family away on holiday for a couple of weeks. It really took over my life. I mean, it was a positive experience, definitely. Would I do it again? <laughs> so we're actually now in the process of manufacturing Opto. The foam body is actually being made in Italy by a company called Fin Project, a very special kind of EVA foam. We're working directly with the factory in Italy. They're helping us with the whole sort of R&D process. All the plastic parts for Opto are made in China, but all of that's put together and assembled in Italy and then shipped out. Once we get the air into the market, Market. We've also got some plan to have um, our own app to provide curated content through, through Opto's app. Uh, another area that we're particularly interested in um, is AR or augmented reality. Extending the functionality of Opto, we developed this faceplate to be a modular to um, develop some further accessories for it. The great thing about being a startup is that we, we have an idea and, and like you know we just make it happen and we make it happen very, very quickly. As an unknown brand, it definitely brings its own challenges. So, one of the things that we really uh, need help with is, is, is trying to get the brand out there, people understand it, and make a connection between um, Opto and uh, virtual reality. Apart from Opto, just in general, the world of VR, AR, immersive experiences, where do you see it taking us? These devices could replace personal computing, and it goes beyond virtual reality and, and augmented reality. You know, there's a whole world of movies and other things that you can do, sharing 360 photos with your friends, you know, being able to recreate somewhere that you've just been on holiday and have them look at that. The price of those cameras is coming down now to a few hundred pounds. So I think that, you know, user-generated content, movies, there's so much more to virtual reality than just games. Recently met a company from Spain who um, developed some haptic gloves. You were able to set the sensitivity so you could even feel a feather touching your hand. These kind of haptic devices have interesting business applications. It's great to see that the future of virtual reality is not just in the hands of the big brands. And as Richard mentioned, there's still many, many areas to be disrupted that go beyond gaming. For example, healthcare, that is definitely one to keep an eye on. And for all of these kind of news and more startup experiments and exciting technologies, you know where to come, right here. Make sure to subscribe and I'll be seeing you next Thursday. Yo, see you.